Wood chip bioreactors. They're nothing new in Illinois' tile-drained region. The oldest one in the country was installed here in 1995. But this conservation practice has gained increased attention in recent years as Illinois farmers look for cost-effective strategies to help the state reduce nitrogen losses by 45 percent. Illinois' extensive tile drainage system has helped the state become a powerhouse of corn and soybean production. High concentrations of nitrates carried in tile water, however, have contributed to water quality concerns in Illinois and downstream in the Gulf of Mexico. Every year, about 400 million pounds of nitrate is, uh, goes down the rivers in Illinois and heads to the Mississippi River and then to the Gulf of Mexico. Of that 400 million pounds, it's hard to say exactly how much comes from the tile drain region. We know about 80% comes from agriculture and the bulk of that, and it's hard to give an exact percentage, but most of that comes from the tile drain region of, uh, of, of central and northern Illinois. In terms of the nitrate reduction percentage from a wood chip bioreactor, the average that we used in the in nutrient loss reduction strategy was 25%. And that, that's an average loss, uh, but it's going to vary dramatically from year to year and bioreactor to bioreactor. Bioreactors remove nitrogen from tile water through a process called denitrification. This occurs when drainage is redirected through a buried trench filled with wood chips. Denitrification is a natural part of the nitrogen cycle happening around us every day. In the process of denitrification, good bacteria that live in the soil breathe nitrate in and breathe out nitrogen gas. The gas they breathe out is dinitrogen gas, which makes up 78% of our atmosphere. The idea of a bioreactor is based on providing these denitrifying bacteria an extra food source. Because they eat carbon, you could really fill the bioreactor with just about any organic carbon source. Wood chips are really good, and what we've been using mostly because they provide carbon that's ready to go. It's like uh, going through a drive through at McDonald's for these little bacteria. The food is right there, but they also last for a long time. Bioreactors vary in size, but most are approximately 100 feet long and 10 to 30 feet wide, and can treat water from roughly 20 to 80 drainage acres. Their small size allows them to fit in edge of field buffer strips or grassy areas. Installing a bioreactor takes little, if any, land out of production. Their design is simple. A typical bioreactor has two control structures at either end of the trench. The inlet structure routes water from the tile line into the trench while still allowing excess water to bypass it during high flow events. An important part of the bioreactor design is the bypass flow line. Sometimes, especially in the early spring when we have a lot of drainage water coming from our fields, it would simply be too much to route into any bioreactor. There's really no hindrance of your drainage capacity with this practice. The outlet control structure is responsible for holding water in the bioreactor long enough for denitrification to occur. Gates in both structures allow farmers to regulate the amount of water directed into the bioreactor and adjust the retention time. Installation takes roughly two days and costs approximately $6,000 to $12,000. Financial assistance is available for bioreactors that align with NRCS design standards. We found that bioreactors are one of the most cost-effective ways of reducing nitrate. Uh, the cost we estimated was $2.21 per pound of nitrate removed. That's at the lower end of all the practices that we, lo we looked at. Once installed, wood chip bioreactors effectively remove nitrogen for at least 10 years with minimal maintenance. In early spring, when the drainage flow is fast and the water is cool, additional gates need to be lowered into the outlet control structure to retain water longer. Those gates then have to be removed at the end of the season when drainage slows, allowing water to flow through the bioreactor unimpeded. As the wood chips degrade, the bioreactor will decrease in height. Um, and so that's one way to know that your bioreactor is getting near the end of its life. The best way to know is if you're monitoring your bioreactor, monitoring how much nitrate is going in and how much nitrate is leaving. And if you see those numbers becoming very similar, that means your bioreactor is not removing very much nitrate. There's still a lot we don't know about wood chip bioreactors. What's clear is that they are a low-cost, low-hassle strategy that can help farmers do their part to curb the flow of nitrogen to the Gulf of Mexico. To learn more about wood chip bioreactors and available financial assistance, contact your local NRCS office.
For more information on nutrient management practices, visit illinoiscbmp.org.